Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're working on a pretty quick and easy project. One of the things that we've noticed is that we love this rig. The back of the suspension is pretty darn solid for the most part, but when we go over bumps or there's like a, a dip in the road or we hit a pothole, this front end, and if you have ever driven an E450 that's stock, you know what I'm talking about. This front end is pretty, uh, pretty crazy. And the steering is sort of all over the place. <laughs> and if a truck blows by, obviously, we're uh, we're all over the place. So we don't really like that. We don't want to get sucked into other vehicles. We don't want to get blown around. And we definitely want to like slow that shaking down so that we're not twisting and rocking nearly as much as we are right now. Our first project is gonna be a quick and easy one. It is the Sumo Springs bumpers that's going to go ahead and prevent the suspension from coming up nearly as much. So axles should go ahead, hit the Sumo Spring product, and instead of compressing, they're much longer and much more stiff. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Right now, if you see this little black box, the axle comes up and hits that, but you can see there's a good amount of travel right in there. So this is all the rubber that is keeping this from hitting the frame of the vehicle, I believe. And so it allows a lot of travel, but it can only go to this point. In comparison, we'll be installing this guy. So it acts as a bigger bumper and it's probably about double that size. And the best part is it's just got a thread and they screw right in. Before I had done any research, I started kind of calling around and getting quotes. There were shops quoting me two hours of labor to do this. I had one that said about an hour and a half. We thought we'd give it a shot, order the parts ourselves off of Amazon, save a good amount of money there, and then pay nothing for labor. And I'll show you how to do the install. So I've already done the other side. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and of course you could you probably prefer to use jacks but we're just going to use our levelers here because i know i can fit under there even if they were to compress and come back down so we're underneath we've got our wheel got our bumper here and if i come through here here's our axle and i've got that little bump stop here so i'm going to take a 10 millimeter ratchet remove the bolt that's in here and all we should have to do is hand tighten the the replacement All right, so I've got this guy off. See, this, there was a nut that came with this guy, but we're not gonna use that because there's not enough clearance. And all you gotta do is take that guy and spin it on in. This really is about as easy as it gets. <laughs> the hardest, it is harder to jack your uh, the front end of your RV up. But really, if I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> and there she is. I've already done the other side there, so, uh, and in a future project, we're actually going to replace the steering stabilizer. This is a piece of junk. We're also going to go ahead and replace the uh, stabilizing bar, and this should be not much more difficult. There's just two bolts here and a bolt here, so it shouldn't be a big deal at all. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I think the worst part is just crawling on the ground. The rest of it is very very easy my recommendation if you yourself can't do it pay a kid five bucks to get under there and do that it's it's pretty foolproof tomorrow morning we'll go ahead and uh we'll take it for a test drive because we're we'll parked for the evening and tomorrow we're actually going in for some different service but we found a few a few things and we still have that leak so we'll have another video on that anyways we'll cut back in in the morning and i'll give you our review next day and we've driven from Seattle to Kent, Washington. We're here for a little bit of service anyways and it was the <laughs> it was pretty great timing. If you've ever driven in Seattle, especially a big vehicle like this, you know that those roads are pretty uh, pretty brutal. They're not they're not nice roads, especially if you're heading on I-5 and, and they have these metal tracks with little 
uh, what look like spikes, uh, but they have the bolts popping up in the tracks and every single one of those you hit, uh, they're just terrible. Uh, and when you're going up the hills, of course, you've got all sorts of stress on the frame, you've got all sorts of stress on the suspension, and there's twisting. And normally what would have happened, twists and then the, the weight kind of tries to balance back and forth and it keeps going. So there's a lot of reverberation. I'm really pleased to say uh, that not only was this a really easy install, it was around 200 bucks, 220, something like that with tax. It took minutes to install, but it makes a world of difference. So obviously you're gonna feel a little bit of that as you would in any vehicle. When we hit a bump, you feel it and then it stops. It doesn't twist nearly as much uh, because there's just not as much travel this way, uh, which obviously is exactly what we want. So I give it a huge A plus. And if this was the only upgrade you were to do to your RV when you have the funds, would not recommend it more. And for an extra 200 bucks, it's probably something that really should be pre-installed from the factory. Anyways, let me go ahead and end this one right here. Thanks for following along, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.